Hello and welcome to today's Partner Forum webcast. I'm conscious that many of you will not have seen us do a webcast in this format previously, um, but there's been so much going on, particularly around the, the proposed partner membership model, that we thought it was worth sharing with the wider community. And this seemed like an excellent way of getting the message out, as we haven't got a face-to-face -face meeting schedule. I do hope you find it useful and informative. Please do feel free to come back and contact us if you have any questions and feedback. And um, let's get started. So, as many of you may know, um, the Partner Forum Working Group started last year working with the user group around a different way of recognizing partners and the contributions they make to the Oracle user group. The design point for the discussions was very much around, the in the same way that Oracle recognizes partners who invest in them with different partner tiers, such as um, platinum or gold, that the user group would recognize partners who were investing in the user group community. And those partners would also feel rewarded and get incremental benefit from the relationship they have with the user group. OK, so let's move forward to look at where we've got to with um, the partner membership model today. So going through some of the principles, and I, I, I apologize if some people have seen this, but I just wanted to get everybody back onto one page. So the principle of the partner membership model was that it would apply to all companies. So this is to organizations who actually um, sell products and services around the Oracle economy, as opposed to users who purchase the license from Oracle. So this is a change to the user group men membership model. It will mean that independent consultants and contractors who earn their living within the community also take a partner membership. That said, we will now be recognizing two types of partner. The independent partner to recognize the community that they are in and the value they bring to the user group, and the larger commercial partners and organizations that are probably those that today are engaged around the partner forum. The principle around the design, as I think most of you will, well, I hope most of you will know, was that a partner will either achieve their membership tier by paying um, for the amount, paying an amount for the different levels of membership, or alternatively, um, earning points through their contribution to the market. Now, I realize that sounds, um, that sounds odd without giving you some context, so let's think about that. You could earn points, perhaps, by um, bringing your customers to speak at an event. You could earn points, perhaps, for um, um, nominating yourselves to partner awards. You could earn points for being engaged in the partner forum and working group. So right now, there's a, a significant piece of work going on by our office staff to look at the different kinds of activities that bring value to the entire user group community and how we would allocate those points to make it fair for the members, for both large, small, independent organizations. The plan will be to have one level of points. The top tier for each type of partner is by invitation only. And the office are doing a lot of work on, on how that will be um, seen as fair and equitable. In the independent community, that's to recognize that there are indeed some individuals out there who contribute a lot and are also seen as key subject matter experts within their field who, who we would like to offer this prestigious um, top tier of independent membership to. For those consultants and services partners that are maybe more traditional than those on this call today, again, it needs to be a way that will be fair and equitable and measurable, but also recognizing that actually, you know, for some partners, it's very difficult to measure the um, measure just by points the amount of value they're bringing to the user group. Um, possibly new, since um, some of you will have seen some of these charts, is we've also decided to introduce some points for negative behavior. Now, I don't want you all panicking and thinking, oh gosh, what's that? But what this is around is recognizing that actually there is a challenge when people, people aren't engaging right. So the suggested things that might fall into this category are no-show presenters. I do know there were some partners who had a number of speaking slots secured last year for conference who in fact sent nobody in the end, which left holes in the agenda and also meant that other partners had missed out on, on being selected for potential speaking slots. 
it's also a partner holding a competitive event. So holding an event um, on a subject similar to one that's running from the user group and conflicting the requirements of this limited audience. So those are examples of, um, of the kinds of behaviours that could be in, in the, the negative points category. So, so this point is really important. Um, the whole purpose of this is to have a membership tier and structure that will be recognised by the council, the SIG committees, the conference committees, um, exhibitors and sponsors by their, as in a similar way as today, um, exhibitors and sponsors are recognised by the communities by the commercial agreements they've signed. So, um, the membership tiers being recognised is really important. Um, and what that means is that, that partners who are engaged and recognising as contributing to the um, community will be given priority in a number of areas, which hopefully will mean they get a greater return on their investment um, from the, the time they dedicate to the user group. Um, the next bullet is just a point of admin. You'll only score points to the highest ranking criteria with any group. And that's to, that's to say you can't, um, you can't have a duplication of point counting. There'll be no double bubble. So the plan for this is to start points. We had originally planned, I think the office are reviewing this currently actually. So we're looking for a new membership start date of early 2013. Um, there had been original design by the office, because we're counting points and the UK AOG operate within an annual calendar, of bringing this in so that all partner memberships will be renewed at the same point in time. That's currently under review by the office. Um, and also when the qualifying points will start from is under review by the office. What you can all rest assured on this call is that there's a great deal of work going in to make sure that we've got a fair process for implementing this. And also that um, and also that the office um, can, can manage what will be a new requirement on them. So just a few things in all of this that I've been doing on the partner membership model. As most of you know, I'm, I'm your council representative. Um, so I took the original proposal that I think I shared with everybody on, in the December meeting to the February council where we had a discussion. Actually, the council um, saw this as a really positive um, move from the partner community as a way of helping to get partners more engaged and also a way of delivering more value back to partners. I know some of you may be surprised, but actually the independents who are also members of council, and I know they've spoken to their colleagues and peers since, actually also see this as a, as a way of adding value to that independent community. I think the headline news that independents would have to pay a partner membership had been greeted um, with some scepticism. But actually, looking at the structures that are being defined and the work that's going on behind, this isn't about asking independents to pay more. And actually, by earning points, those independents that are engaged can earn themselves more benefits and get more value from user groups. So I took this to the council meeting in February. The council said, Yes, this looked great. They really liked it and wanted a little more work to be done so they could understand it. So between the February and the council meeting that took place at the end of March, I worked with um, some members of the partner forum committee that have been engaged in this previously and also with Graham as commercial director and Karen from the office um, to take the proposal to the next layer. I took the proposal, which these slides are an extract from, back to council at the end of March and Council have absolutely approved these changes to partner membership. So this is now with the office ready for people to um, do the work so we can actually get to see the detail that sits behind this. I've just put another couple of slides in to just share with people um, um, some of the thinking. So independents need an independent partner membership. I've already said that. So it, it's anticipated there'll be three tiers of membership. The names on, are, are on the slide, as you can see, so people would purchase an advocate membership, that would be the lowest level. Can I just say, by the way, the names are working, working names, and they are going to be decided. I know one of the pieces of feedback we've had is that people really don't like those names. They've been chosen to try and show that, that people were, you know, the levels, but 
people in the independent community really didn't like them. So all three tiers are the same base price. You actually can only move from, from the first tier to the second with qualifying points, so speaking slots, sick chairing, volunteering, those kinds of things. And as I said before, um, the top tier will be um, invitation only. So all three tiers are at the same base price in the independent model. Within the commercial partner, which I guess is what more people on this um, call will be interested in, it's planned to have four levels of membership. Again, the names are to be confirmed, and the commercial team in the office are working on that. So four tiers of membership. Um, the, the two that sort of replicate what we have now in the two partner tiers that are available, a platinum partner, which you could purchase and earn points for, and earn. so all three tiers are at the same base price in the independent model. Within the commercial partner, which I guess is what more people on this um, call will be interested in, it's planned to have four levels of membership. Again, the names are to be confirmed, and the commercial team in the office are working on that. So four tiers of membership. Um, the, the two that sort of replicate what we have now in the two partner tiers that are available, a platinum partner, which you could purchase and earn points for, and a diamond partner by invitation only. The prices start at the same um, level as they are currently for a partner membership. And actually, in the base partner membership, I think the benefits package based compared to what is given today has been slightly increased with some of the more digital media kind of stuff. So those are my charts for today. As I say, I've shared that it's been back through council. I've shared that there's a lot of work now going on with, a, with the team in the office to look at how the points thing can be administered and managed, what those points should be to make sure we've got, we've done some modeling to make sure that actually it gives fair and balanced small partners and big, big partners when we look at how people earn points and what the relative um, number of points for given activities is, trying to show some relevance to time invested. Um, the plan would be that we share with you at the July partner forum meeting, which I do hope you will all be attending, um, the full details of this program and a, more, and a more concrete implementation of timeline. I'd like to say I see this as a really positive move from, the, from how the partner forum can instigate change, how by some ideas in Matt Lawrence's working with UK AUG working group, we've actually come forward to a change in membership model that should actually change um, how partners are perceived within the communities and how partners are able to contribute and get value from those communities. I hope this has been a useful webcast. I hope it's answered some of your questions, whilst I recognise not all the detail is yet available. I just want people to make I just wanted people to understand that this is not something we talked about last year which has gone away or is sitting in a cupboard somewhere. This is very much something that people are spending a lot of time and energy on. It now has UK AG Council support. And this is how we're going to take UK AG forward for partners in 2013. If people do have any questions, you all know how to get hold of me or reach out on the partner forum online or um, via any other means you know of finding me, Twitter, LinkedIn, and I'd be delighted to answer your questions. As always, your feedback is valuable. Thank you very much for your time today.